joining us tonight for episode nine, I think. I've started to lose count. Um, we are delighted to have, I've been looking forward to this for a long time, uh, Tomi Yarov with us from Israel, um, a percussionist which I've long looked up to. Um, of course, formerly of Perkadu, Perkadu, the Israeli Perkadu, and um, now is a, a massive icon in Israel for percussion. So um, I know the guys are really going to enjoy this. And uh, Toma, thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, Tim, the thanks is all yours for you, really. It's like, it's amazing, the, this production. I'm seeing it from back here in Israel. It's just amazing and very much inspiring. So thanks for that. Thank you. All right, so this evening we've got a variety of performances. Um, I will try my best to navigate around smoothly. We, we have got a few additional PDFs and things popping around, which is fantastic. Tom has done um, a lot of work on the background just to, to try and make this as um, open for everyone as, and inclusive as possible. So thank you for that. But uh, do bear with me whilst I'm flipping screens and things like that. But we're going to start off um, by just hiding everyone in the backstage. See you later, Nozomi. Um, and Shalev. So don't worry, Toma, you will um, not be able to see them, but they will still be able to see you. All right. And we are going to start with Jose. Jose. All right. Correct. Jose. Um, so let's see if I can get this screen a little bigger so you can see. There we go. So, Jose, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're performing tonight? I'm, I'm hoping that the video is going to be all right. So we've had a few issues with Jose's video so far. So. I know. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to... The video I sent is the piece called Intern Sounds. It's for vibes and electronics. Great. So let's yeah. see, and then obviously right. we'll discuss a few things about that. Yeah, great. So
Okay, so first of all, really sorry. It's always it feels so bad to stop uh, music at the in the middle. But since we want to discuss so much uh, things, so it will be the nicest thing to do for now. Uh, so Jose, first of all, really great job. I really like the way you play, and uh, I also saw that you most of it you memorize it. You are actually by heart, or yeah. not? Yeah, I memorized it. Amazing. So, because I saw there are some uh, music stands, but still, you you hardly look at it. Yeah, it was just for one measure. I was struggling to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So that's a. I'm a huge fan for memorizing music, and we will discuss it uh, further on in this uh, masterclass. But let's start from the beginning, okay? First of all, tell me why did you choose to to play interzone? Uh it's different from what I usually play, and it okay. sounds cool. And what is it that you usually play? Uh, sorry. Uh, well, for vibes, the repertoire I was playing before, it's just like modern music. Uh, this brings me back to like more tonal stuff. Okay. Amazing. Okay, so yeah. the, the things that I wanted to discuss with you and, of course, all the others, um, is the way I approach this kind of music and and to to show you even I, I thought I will prepare some kind of a diagram but instead I just prepared all kinds of notes so we can see that um, um, the way I approach this kind of music so do you know anything about this music other than the many notes that are written I mean the Why background not about the music yeah, what does uh, Bruce Hamilton says about why he wrote it? What you know, some general information about the, the piece. Didn't really look into it. I just only saw a commission by Tim Jones. <laughs> That's it, really. Okay. So first of all, I really urge you to, before you start to, to play anything, I'm uh, always talking with my students about that. That it's like we are sort of detectives. So. We need to, to find as many clues as we as we can find in order us to make the best performance that we can deliver to the audience, to the recording, whatever. Okay? So I listened to this music. I uh, admit that I didn't know. I was not familiar with this fine uh, uh, composition before, WPG. Uh, so it was really nice for me to learn some new repertoire. So that's what I found out about this composition about interzones. So first of all, it's built out of sections, right? With a section and another section and another section. And each section is more or less a new scene, even sometimes a new character. And that's your job. That's your duty to show it to me that I will. It's like a movie, you know, with different characters. And every time a new character come into the scene and uh, makes it much more interesting. You know, there are few uh, few movies uh, that are uh, only with one star or with one actor or actresses, right? So um, so let's go uh, step by step. Okay. So that's all my opinion. It's an uh, exchange of music ideas. So it's not the truth, the only truth, and uh, nothing but the truth. It's my opinion. So let's start. From my point of view, I see the, the beginning of the piece. It's like an overture, just like we are going to an opera and we have an overture that the composer is showing us, okay, this is our journey, prepare. I will elaborate on that um, further on uh, during the performance. But this is, this is my uh, story. Electronics with vibraphone, different styles, all kinds of um, uh, fragments, uh, nice fragments. And this is it. So for me, it's, that's the overture or the presentation of the piece until around one minute and 15 seconds. Okay? Then at 1.15, at 115 you switch the mallets, right? And we are prepared to the next section. 
when you're switching mallets, I really think that myself as an audience need to, sh to, to see you that you are still into the music. I mean, it's not like, okay, now someone told me to change my mallet, so just a second, I will be right with you. Okay, I took another mallet. Okay, let's go on. No, it's still... I'm in the music. Someone else is uh, playing. It's, it's almost a chamber music because the electronics, this is my duo now. So I'm listening to him. I'm, I'm into the music. I love the way he's... Uh, I love the sound. I love the phrasing. I love the improvisation he's doing, whatever. I'm listening to him and I'm into... I'm inside the music. I'm inside the zone, okay? Inter-zones. I'm still in the zone, okay? And then... A new current, uh, as I said before, change of character. That should, should be like a jazz player. The first image that I had in my imagination was something cool. Think about the Blue Note uh, uh, club in New York uh, around in the, back in the 60s where you could enter and everything was full of uh, um, you know, cigarette smoke and uh, all kind of, like, the vibe in, uh, around midnight. And that's the vibe you should, you should tell me. That's your story. And if I am, as a, um, um, again, as an audience, if I'm not sure, does Jose plays everything that is written or maybe he's improvising some of it? If I'm, if I'm asking myself that, that's your win. Then you did something amazing. Because it's, you know, there is this small bass and some cymbal at the background, and then the chords in the vibe, bam, bam, bam. you just, okay, I feel like this chord now, I will play it. I shouldn't, I, I don't want to, to know that, okay, Bruce Hamilton told me to play that chord at this uh, immediate second, so I played it. No, show it to me. Uh, show that uh, you are improvising again with your colleague. With your electronic electronics okay great let's move yeah. on and then we are uh, we are reaching uh, minute number two okay next character another another we are raising we are having a, another step a step which is more groovier edgier again if i'm into the jazz scene it's a uh, i uh, it's really sounded familiar with uh, some compositions and sound of Steps Ahead, you know, Mike uh, Minieri, sometimes even the Breaker Brothers, if you are you're familiar with these uh, groups. Oh, I haven't heard of those, really. Okay, so I... I'll check I them out. Exactly, exactly. Check them out, Steps Ahead, Breaker Brothers, uh, really fine uh, groups. And uh, I think Bruce Hamilton is even implying to this kind of music okay in generally speaking uh, you can now i'm thinking about it you can describe this composition like a really fast evolution of the vibraphone it's like in nine ten minutes how long is the piece yeah like ten minutes ten minutes yeah so in ten minutes we have so much characters so much styles so much uh, uh, dynamics, techniques, uh, the scenes are always uh, keep uh, and evolving. So it's really interesting. You can really uh, almost feel the evolution throughout the piece. Okay? And that's not a, a very long evolution. We're talking about 100 years. That's it. Okay. So, so I want you to show me that now, okay, if I had, if I was the cool jazz player until uh, minute number two. Now, the next step, edgier, groovier. Okay, something is happening. Okay? And we move on. We are at minute number four. From minute number four to minute number five, the tempo is rising. An up tempo, sort of a bebop walking bass, right? It's like fast. And, uh, and again, I'm, as you can, uh, you will get to know me in this uh, session, I'm really using a lot of imagination because again, I think as musicians, our first duty is to tell a fascinating and uh, interesting story. 
That's the bottom line. You can play fast, but if it's boring, no one will come to your concert. You can play very clean, and uh, no, you won't have even one uh, mistake uh, throughout the recital or concert, but if it's boring, no one will attend your next concert. But if you are telling something, if you are into the music, if you are into the zone, and you are changing characters, even like, think about um, that the masks are changing all the time. So the, the people who are listening to you, your audience will be always, excuse me, but with their butt on the edge of the chair, like looking like that and not like, okay, yeah, very nice concert. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. No, we don't want that reaction. We want what just we experienced. Wow, that was unbelievable. That was amazing. This is your goal and you are there. Just like a few more steps, a few more uh, fine tunings. Okay? Um, so again, I'm going back to my imagination. I'm hearing something like Miles Davis Quintet, which you know, the, the hard bop. And uh, Miles Davis, what he, he brought is like Tony uh, Williams on drums, Ron Carter, fast. And then Miles Davis, the cool, short phrases, but so accurate. Like, that's it. So the, the, the game between sound and space, that's what makes this uh, section so great and so fascinating. That you're taking your time. Yeah, the, the tempo is fast. Everything is like edgier, but I'm very accurate with my notes. Okay? So far, any questions? Do you agree? You, you don't agree? Just share with us. No, yeah, it makes sense. I actually played it last Saturday in my recital, and I had kind of like the same comment from my professor that maybe I need to, like, I can nail all the notes, but maybe I need to show more. Exactly, and I think it's a it's a very important step uh, in our life as uh, musicians throughout all our lives. I mean, the beginning we are learning the the, the notes, then we try to make it more you know, into the body, into the muscle memory, etc. And then the next step before the concert, we should again think, okay, what am I telling to my audience? What is my story at this specific uh, piece? Okay. Uh, yeah. Another uh, image uh, that I had in this uh, one minute uh, section between four and five, uh, as you can see, is maybe some kind of a chasing scene out of a movie. You know, something which is like something is which is someone is chasing uh, another person or something like that, but really show it to me. Okay, and then we are coming to minute number five, mysterious section. Okay, mysterious section. So again, maybe longer uh, movements with your hand, some use your mind. Okay, your mimics in your uh, eyes don't be the same look throughout the whole piece. Okay, like, okay, now I'm uh, uh, in a mysterious uh, section. So again, like, do something like that, like really, okay, I'm like a fortune teller or I don't know, something like that. Okay. Okay, and then uh, all this section with the kicks, unison with the electronics. So you are so uh, uh, precise there. You're really, uh, you nailed it. It's really great. Everything, there is now uh, one kick with the electronic that wasn't exactly on time. So that's a big bravo. It was, it was really Thank great. You. But, but you are playing it and you just played. Show it to us that you know that in this chord, there is an electronic, just like you know, a, a drummer with a big band playing to tank to, to, to pow. He knows where the brass section is doing this pow. So he and he uh, and he prepares us towards this kick. So prepare us with your body. You don't have to compose anything or to add some notes, uh, God forbid, but with your body language, 
show us that here it comes. Bow. Yeah, I know it. I nailed it. Okay. And uh, and it's also uh, will be very confusing in a good way that again myself as an audience I might ask myself wait 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 who is leading which of the parts I mean did is it a, like a trigger on the vibe that you played and then the electronics uh, reacted and played the chord or it's just uh, already written and recorded pre-recorded on the electronic um, uh, soundtrack okay so that can be also great and then i wrote the ps at 6 21 what's going on do you know do you remember not really <laughs> at 6 21 it's the only human voice in the piece there is some something in the electronics that i was shocked and really happy to, to hear it there is someone who's who is shouting like oh Ooh, something like that. Oh, yeah, I know that part. I remember. It's like when I see this kind of, or when, I, when I'm when i listening to this kind of thing uh, and I'm aware of that, that's like a red, a, a big uh, red light to do something with it. If I say, if I may say, or if I may suggest, I would even do something again with my voice, together with him. Oh! Like that. <laughs> So, because you see what what happened to you, you smiled, and that's all about music. Because it's a it's a joke. If there is a ten minute uh, long piece, and the composer decides that in one specific second there is a sound, oh, it's a joke. It's a, it's something that I should play with it. I should comment to. Uh, I should uh, react to that or do something with it. Okay. So yeah. next time, on your next performance, just, you know, experiment. In 621, sing, oh, like that. It's so cool. I'll definitely do it. Great. But don't forget to send me uh, the video. Great. I will. Great. And then uh, we are continuing. As you can see, every level is, uh, except the mysterious uh, the mysterioso section, uh, but generally speaking, the, the the energy is all the time rising, 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 and and when I listened to you play, I really felt towards the end that I don't have, I need to breathe because it was so uh, fascinating and uh, and well done. So I think you can do uh, like really um, take your audience to a really unique experience of listening and watching the great and fine musicians as a, a musician as you are just like that okay so uh, 6:45 to 8:50 again energy again what i saw in my mind a, an action scene towards a, the boiling point of the piece something is really happening there uh, have you seen maybe the movie the crudes I no. Okay, so we have you need steps ahead, Breaker Brothers and the Cruz. That's your homework <laughs> so far. So um, the, it's an animated, uh, really funny movie. And at the beginning, the opening scene is that they are looking for uh, an egg, an ancient uh, dinosaur uh, egg, because that's their breakfast. And what's happening with that? Because all kinds of ancient uh, creatures are after the same egg so there is like a fight and there is a big uh, a lot of humor but a lot of action and then that's it that that's the promised land 850 to 906 very short section 15 seconds uh, and it has to be crazy wild do you know what what what, what do you need to play there do you remember is that's that the, the bam bam yeah. No. Yes. Yes. So you know, just make the big lisandos, big like you are really almost um, out of control, but almost you are in control. Everything is accurate, just like you play. But again, your story to 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 me as an audience should be 
Wow, I'm all, it's crazy. I'm what's going on, what's going on? And then the sinking dust after the storm with all these nice arpeggios and phrases with a big pedal. Like really like a, a magic powder is setting above the vibraphone and everything is very calmly comes to an end. Thank you for taking this, this amazing journey with me and bowing. What do you say? Yeah. You think you can, you can uh, do something uh, with it? Do you, do you like the, uh, my, it's, it's, it's just my approach. It doesn't mean that that's the yeah. way to uh, enter zones. It doesn't. Yeah. Just Makes another... me want to play again. Great. Great. So I think, uh, and I'm really, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I would really, uh, I'm really curious to see the way you would play it next uh, time because I really think you're doing an amazing, amazing work. Amazing job. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Bravo. Thank you. <laughs> great. All right, some fantastic words there. And great that you've got the uh, the PowerPoint on the screen there, Jose. So you can check back on the link, on the live link later to make some notes if you need to. So they're all there already for you. So, oh, is so it going to uh, be on? Yeah, we're live you? right now. We're live. And actually, oh, oh. Tim and, don't, Tim and uh, actually, if I may say, uh, I really yeah. don't mind to send them all this material. It's for them. So maybe better. Yeah, great. Them, uh, on email or you can Jose you can contact me and I will send it to you it's not a problem perfect yeah that would be awesome okay so um am I right in saying you wanted to do Le Cora Cora next let's do it. yes okay let's bring on Toro then good evening hey Torin how are you Torin? Hey, nice to meet you Pleasure. So it's amazing how I, how excited I am after watching each of your uh, videos to actually talk with you now. It's like really. It's really Thank fun. you. Yeah, no, it's it's brilliant. I'm I'm really enjoying the class so far. Great, amazing. So am I. So uh, okay, so let's talk uh, upper gist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so let's see. Uh, Toro, do you want do you want to talk a little bit about this whilst I find the window? Yeah, of course. Um, so I played this for uh, a competition. I mean, uh, I think the video you're going to show is the one from BBC Young Musician, um, yeah. which is uh, uh, quite a big competition in the in the UK for under 18, basically. Well, 18 and under. And so I, I did that literally a week before lockdown in the UK. Wow. Um, that was, when was that? When was it? Yeah, in March twenty. March twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And um. Yeah. So I uh, to do that, I had to basically learn the tombak, kind of from scratch. I started uh, wow. learning wow. this piece. Well, I started actually the first time I opened the music uh, for this piece and started actually, you know, working on the piece was in January. Was just after New Year, pretty much. Um, for that, uh, for that performance, yeah, you worked on that on that piece for two months. Two months and like a week, two weeks or something. Yeah. Okay, I'm bowing you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Really? Wow. Thank you. Amazing. Great job. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it was um, like compared to the so this is, was only part of the performance. Uh, I had to play, in the end, like my total time exceeded the amount of time I was supposed to play for, but they didn't, they didn't ring a bell or anything. Like it was absolutely fine. Um, uh, but I spent probably more time on this piece than on the other two pieces combined. So, um, which makes sense actually in terms of timing, because it was about half, it was more than half of my recital time. It was about, yeah, just under 10 minutes. And, um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of work uh, on this piece on well, on sound and tone for a start. 
um, just for people, I'll, I'll just show bits of the score quickly. Um, it looks like this. So the top line, there's uh, the spoken bit and bottom. That's just for everyone else watching who doesn't have access to the score. Um, and what I found particularly difficult, which is why I started working on it so late, was because I was missing something quite crucial, which is um, like knowing the different sounds you can make on the Zab. Because uh, although there's like indications of pitch, there's no key. So it doesn't tell you, oh, when there's this note written, you should do that thing. It's just kind of do what you want to make yeah. it sound high, low, whatever. It's up to you. Um, another thing that is missing in the score. Uh, um, deliberate. What is that? Do you know? Do, do you know uh, what dynamics. Yeah. Sorry. Dynamics. No dynamics. Uh, yeah, there's no dynamics, and there's no bar lines either. So you kind of have to yeah. work. Why? Uh, sorry, there are bar lines later, but for quite a lot of it, there isn't. Um, and there's no, there's also no indication uh, apart from, um, well, apart from basically when, whenever uh, there, there's some times in the middle where you need to look to to the right, and that is literally all that's written. It normally just says look to the right. The uh, in, when when you'll see it, you'll see that there's also a glass uh, on the sides that's not written in the piece. That's something I stole from the guy who premiered it. Uh, there's a video of him on YouTube, and he has a glass of wine. Uh, but actually, I was not allowed for BBC. I was <laughs> definitely not to have a glass of wine, not even to have a glass of red liquid, and not even allowed to have water in a wine glass. Because wow. it was uh, implied, you know, they didn't want to have the implication <laughs> that young people were getting drunk <laughs> on stage <laughs> or drinking wine. You know, you never know who might be watching. So in the end, you know, I had to go to, like... Um, <laughs> Um, like a home shop, yeah. what do we call it? Uh, um, you no, know, it's, it's amazing because now when you're telling me the story, yeah. so I'm thinking, oh, I understand. But you no, know, just by watching your video, and I saw yeah. this uh, uh, glass, uh, you're looking at it, and then you're stopping and you're continuing with the piece, and then eventually you are having a, a, a drink. I really loved it. So, yeah, I think it actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it doesn't uh, stop. It didn't stop me from really enjoying this uh, uh, thing. Yeah, and in the end, as far as I know, I think I'm the only person who's got a non-wine glass. Well, already who's using who's using a, gla a glass, but a non-wine glass with water. So, yeah. I've done it again uh, a couple more times, but without the BBC. So I didn't have that restriction, but I chose to keep on doing that because, in a way, like it kind of made it mine. You know, it's my way of performing it. Um, okay. So, so yeah. You see the video team. See you somewhere.
Tuổi Tuổi chắc Thu 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 Okay, team. Okay, so again, sorry, sorry for that. No, it's okay. Really, really nice. Okay, so I ask the same question. Um, what do you know about this? What is it about? Uh, well, um, the first time I performed that, I had like a big A5, uh, A4 piece of paper, uh, which I full of notes. I, I spoke, you know, that was uh, the uh, yeah, other yeah. Um, Well, I spoke for like a solid five minutes uh, before a piece uh, about it. Um, so, corps à corps in French means uh, like close quarter combat. Well, close quarters basically is when you're, when you don't have a, like a gun or anything, you just basically hit each other, thrust each other, whatever, yeah. Um, or actually more like, yeah, when you, it's literally like body to body, that's what it means. But it's more, but it's used in the combat uh, context. Um, and yeah, um, basically the, the text is written by a Pergis, um, uh, who's a, a Greek composer, but who, who's lived in France for absolutely ages. And uh, he has, um, well, he focuses a lot in pretty much all of his pieces on um, on yeah mixing theatre uh, in the music and also like different different styles of di different bits of of vocals as well. Um, you yeah, know, one of my favourite bits in that um, in that program is when you turn on the subtitles. Whenever I do like the subtitle says vocalises percussively. Um, and for the other bit, it just says speaks French. Um, but, um, yeah, so what the text kind of describes, and, that, and the actual normal words, like normal French words, only come about halfway into the piece. So before that, it's uh, just, yeah, vocalizations. And it kind of, well, it's very abstract, very surreal. Uh, you have to kind of dig pretty deep to understand what is actually going on. Um, but... If you look at it at face value, it's, it describes a motorcycle race. Um, we're like going round laps, and then one of the uh, motorcyclists getting injured, essentially, uh, and then he just gets like a plaster on his shoulder, and then he's back on the track. Yeah. But, the, but the actual like way it's written is like there's lots of, it's very dramatic. There's lots of um, blood involved and lots of cries. At the end, the very last line, it's like, oh, Im immense cries arise in English um, and yeah it, it basically gets wilder and wilder as you get deeper deep into it and I feel like my job in that piece was to be a kind of well to be a, a lot of people at once at the same time to be um, the protagonist of the story to be the narrator of that story as well um, and uh, when the first bits of French text uh, come in yeah it's it, it seems like, well, what I was trying to embody was a sports commentator, essentially, like the guy in the box um, talking about exactly. what's happening. Okay, so that's, that was my concern, whether you know all these details or not. And so also here did a marvelous job. So, uh, Tim, can you show us the, the next uh, PDF uh, page? Uh, I would really yeah, like to... Just give me a minute. Sure, no problem. Uh, until uh, we can see that, uh, Tori, let's talk about, generally speaking, about the the art of Apergis. Okay? Apergis. Mm -hmm. He has so much, uh, as, just as you described, uh, his 
the theatrical uh, uh, approach and concept, uh, combining different styles, uh, different instruments, making new orchestrations uh, on stage. And I think in one way, again, it's my uh, point of view, Aperdis is sort of uh, the ancestor of John Cage. What do I mean by that? Is that um, when Apergis, I, I, you know what? I'll explain it in a different way. John Cage once said a sentence like that all, ab, all, all objects have souls, and the soul can be liberated by us musicians. Mm. And that's actually when you're thinking about it, it's a, it's a desire that all. That all mankind uh, really wanted. And the most famous example is the uh, Aladdin and the magic lamp, and, uh, and the genie, right? That he's taking a lamp and just rubbing it, and then, oh, there is a soul inside. Yeah. There is an actual genie. So I think what the upper is bringing to us percussionists in specifics, but to music in general, is the really how should I take in your, uh, uh, in our case, this hand drum and the hand drum technique can show that it actually has a soul. And there is a story that, uh, as you said, the narrator is uh, telling us, and, uh, and I need to, to think about how should I do it? How should I deliver the story with the yeah. drum, with this very unique drum and my human voice? Yeah, there's actually a last detail as well. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. There's actually just one last detail I wanted to mention as well in terms of um, right. like characters, is that the drum is also its own character in a lot of ways. Like, if, um, there's a bunch of times where it seems like I'm kind of fighting with it. Um, and also where, for example, there's some, uh, where I'm like concentrating on the glass and then like it draws me back. That's kind of, it, you know, kind of pulling me back into the fight as well so there's there's also the struggle between uh yeah between me and the drum on top of that sorry exactly. Yeah. exactly and thank you for that exactly so let's talk about drum and voice throughout the history of mankind okay yeah. i mean of course it's a that's a, a subject uh, for a whole uh, wpg two weeks of lectures but uh, if i will try to sum it up I can say, I can say when the human uh, the modern humankind uh, formed or you know what, us the opposite the Homo sapiens okay what made us a, a, a the fact to survive was the, the fact that we we became community we started to be to live in tribes and then to protect it, uh, each other. And the first uh, tool that we could protect each other was to alert one another with sort of a very primitive drum. And that mm -hmm. was actually the beginning of music. That was that was it. So if I will, uh, let me something. Okay. I found. Wait. I have your. Uh, floor time. Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. So. Let's demonstrate something. If I'm trying now to tell you that outside my window I see something, but I have no uh, oral abilities to tell you what's going on. I don't know, not English, not uh, Japanese, French, whatever. But still, I want to show you there is something outside. Let's make a test. So I'm playing something like that. Um, I hope you could hear something. But, uh, yeah, I could. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go for something quite dangerous, I imagine. Exactly. That's what I meant. Yeah. You see, we didn't, we didn't change a word. And I didn't and I even tried not to, you know, to, to look uh, with my mimics uh, face. Like, no. I 
try to, to leave uh, my, my face as a poker face. And just let the sound give you the, the right message. So I think that's one of the challenges. Uh, Tim, can you go back to the... Great, thank you. Um, to that, if we are having in our mind that, okay, that's the beginning of music. And now it's my up after, actually, you know, when did it happen? All the story I told you is around 70,000 years ago. It's an era in, uh, in, the human, in the human history that is called the Paleolithic era. And that's the, the time that people started to form groups and eventually started to communicate, first of all, with sounds, something like that. And then, step by step, language started to form and to, to be invented. OK? So um, that's something that I think Apergis is doing here. 70,000 years after our fathers of grandfathers of grandfathers of grandfathers <laughs> in the, like any Bushman or something like that. OK? So that's when I'm approaching this kind of music, I'm saying, OK, now I'm not in the 21st century, but I'm simultaneously at the 21st century because I'm a narrator and I'm a corresponder and I'm telling the story of these uh, racers that are uh, doing their race. But again, I'm talking and communicating with the prehistoric man. OK? Now let's go to the next step. The challenge of playing theatrical music. Okay. When playing a theatrical music, and again, I salute you with the two months of work. It's an amazing job. Thank you. But that fact on the slide. I think that when we are doing theatrical music, it's very important for us to memorize it and to, to be ourselves on stage. And uh, just like we don't expect, expect us to go to a, a theater play, okay, to sit, and then to see the, the, one of the actors go on stage, and you know, to be or not to be. <laughs> this is the question. I mean, that's something I want to be or not to be. This is the question. Okay, I'm looking right at you. I'm I'm transferring something with my eyes, with my face, with my body. I'm not I'm not occupied with this boring text. I'm all yours. I'm telling you the story. And in a theatrical uh, music, I think it's almost a necessity. Okay. Um, do that. And uh, I actually I did it on purpose. Before, just just yeah. before you are. Uh, you, your comment, because I would like to, yeah. to hear what you say. Tim, is it possible to show us uh, minute 611? It's doable, or I'm asking let, something? Is... Let me try. Hold on. Okay. Amazing. Thank you for this attempt. So, 611. Six seconds. 611. Uh, okay, just go. I don't know whether this will buffer, but let's see. Okay, let's try. Avant des aventures de cannabis, c'était déjà reparti tout le long de la course et de côté de quoi encore les 500 visibles avaient vu la ligne de Paris, mais où de temps en haut, Charles sur les étés, ils sont le cas, c'est un enfant, faisant un beau souple, c'est un droit, toute la nuit, je peux dire, il est sorti, il est sorti, que l'équipe de Totem s'en prête à bien sûr, c'est un rôle, c'est un pizza, mais comment on devrait dire, deux appelés sur fraîche, à son bras, le sang coule, l'immense qui s'élève. Avant des aventures de cannabis, c'était déjà reparti tout le long de la course et de côté de quoi encore les 500 visibles avaient vu la ligne de Paris, mais où de temps en haut, Charles sur les étés, ils sont le cas, c'est un enfant, faisant un beau souple, c'est un droit, toute la nuit, je peux Okay, I, had, I, I have a confession to make. I saw this part at least 10 times. At least 10 times. I enjoyed it so much. And why? Because I, I, I felt that you are talking to me. I mean, you didn't 
see the, the page, the notes, anything. You really lectured me in a very charismatic way and with the hand. And I will tell you something. You need to know it because it's very important now. And I'm teaching <laughs> and I'm there. And it's like really like almost knows if there were a UK election, I will put a note uh, for COVID. You she convinced tried. me. Okay. You convinced me. But then the drum joins. And then you are talking, 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 and then the drum starts to, to, to play. And then what's happening? Again, the head is going down. So I think when the drum is joining, because it's two persons that are sometimes agreeing, but most of the time not agreeing, the energy should go up. And I felt that the energy is not collapsing, but really declining. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and I have to like I got to confess that I didn't really clock the fact that I looked back down either. Uh, at oh, this point, I didn't clock the fact that I looked back down either at that point. So thanks for pointing it out. Um, yeah, but just in, in general, I did like I could have memorized the whole thing, uh, but I it was like a, a conscious decision not to because the whole um. The whole aspect that it's a tale being told, and so that's why I'm reading it off, especially at the beginning. Like, um, yeah, the fact that like there, there are also some some elements of looking down and up at the text, uh, um, uh, and I think where we stopped the first clip, some bits there were like that, where it was, well, I was mostly trying to get on with reading whatever, well, with reading and lecturing whatever I was trying to. Uh, you know, to keep on telling my tale, but keep on getting distracted by things like up here. Um, so you know that was like the intention all, most of the time. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, when you are uh, sharing with that your thoughts and, uh, uh, and this information, so mm -hmm. I think you did an even better job. But two things. Uh, I will tell you a story, okay, mm -hmm. that I reminded now. Uh, Ten years ago, I was playing a concert uh, of uh, Steve Reich music, and uh, together with Steve Reich, I had the pleasure and honor to play with Steve Reich. And ever since then, we are really in contact. We are talking to each other. A few days ago, he wrote me an email because we are doing a big concert of his music here in Israel. And he's really amazing musician, as you all know. So. When we came to this uh, to the rehearsal of this uh, uh, production, uh, he said, "You know what? Let's start the concert with clapping music. You know it, right? Clapping music to." So I told him, uh, "Okay, sure." So I really prepared myself towards the first rehearsal with Steve Reich. He was the one who kept the, the pattern, and I I did the the, uh, the shifting. And I and he said, okay, Thomas, should we start the rehearsal? I said, yes, sure, yes, sure. I'm ready. And he, he looks at me and he says, but where is the notes? Where is the music? And I was shocked. I mean, he was, all he has to play is... Right, that's it. So I'm proudly saying, I'm telling him, uh, well, Steve, I, I memorized it. And then uh, he says, uh, no. That's wrong. I don't want us to go on stage, and you know, people will see two, two bunch of people. Two people are going on stage and just clapping music and uh, clapping hands, sorry, and doing stuff. And then after a while, just stop and going. They have to know that it's all written. It's really written down. Okay. And, um, and then I said, "Wow, that's amazing." And you know, uh, there, is a, actually, there is a video I can show you us playing that. And then after each period, I'm watching it again, and I'm always amazed that when you see Steve Reich himself, the composer, looking at the, the music stand, you can see him like, like really uh, following eight note after eight note after eight note after eight note after eight note, really concentrated. Why? Because that's his story. He wants to tell the audience, I'm reading notes here, I'm reading new music. I'm not just improvising 
uh, with my hands. So if you are doing that, so I think you should stick with it and show it to me. Like mm -hmm. exaggerate with your gestures. So if I'm having here the notes, okay? So I'm, I'm talking, 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 and then all of a sudden, okay. Yeah. Really make it, uh, use uh, exaggeration points, yeah. I think. Clear. Can, it can uh, be, first of all, funny because you know when you for instance when you looked at the glass people are laughing and why they are laughing because they are enjoying <laughs> they are enjoying you uh, i broke a little bit as well uh, like I remember, there's a tiny little bit like the side of my mouth goes up <laughs> it's also fun it's also fun yeah. to it's also okay to, to smile a little bit it's okay and uh, because you are like it's a uh, like um What's the right word I'm looking for? It, uh, looking for. It's like, yeah, I'm playing with you. It's like, yeah, now I'm. I know that I'm playing. I'm playing with you, and you are having fun. Yeah, I'm also having fun. It's okay. Because that's a gag. What you, what you did with the glass. It's, uh, it's great. It's really great. Really great. So, that's what I think. If you if either you are memorizing everything and like going on stage and again the people will be shocked did it uh, was it written wasn't it written like that like these kind of questions or if you are deliberately deliberately uh, using notes show it to us don't show it because when i look at your uh, performance your excellent performance when i saw the notes it looked like I'm not sure I'm remembering, so just in case I have it here, I have it here, mm -hmm. just in case. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel it as an audience. I want, just, if this is a prop, so it's a prop. Yeah. I'm using it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. cool. Questions, uh, you or anyone else? Ideas? Mm. Uh, I have one more thing. I think uh, your technique, if you, again, if you started it from scratch, as you mentioned before, so that's, again, really, really I admire you for that again. But don't leave it there. Take lessons with the hand drummer, uh, yeah. the and, it, uh, and learn the, the different, uh, because remember what I said uh, at the beginning, there is a lack of dynamic. It didn't use any dynamics. And I think there is a lack of the dynamics also in your performance. I'm missing something which is more like for Sandy or uh, really soft, like whispering. I don't live here. Uh, sorry, I have only that. This is a very bad, it's a sort of a Egyptian <laughs> daula. But, um, okay. But if I'm, uh, I can, I can say, okay. All this kind is really great, but it needs something which is more powerful, like. Something which is more powerful. Or what about maybe you did it, maybe not. Uh, just uh, sorry if you if I missed it, but like rubbing the pin. Uh, kind of go like that. Okay. Uh, that's that's important. Important. Yeah. Sometimes you do it with the skin, and sometimes with the fingernails. And yeah, because uh, just because it didn't, it really wasn't loud enough when I did it like that. Okay. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was like kind of this scratching, but with the, with this mm. bit, with the front of the fingernails, not with the. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, it would be really nice if you will explore the different sounds and different dynamics that can can be made out of this very simple uh, music instrument. Mm. Mm. That would be really nice. Thank you. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks so Round much. Round of applause for the very nice. Bravo! 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 
Okay. What's uh, next? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. And uh, me either. Are we going uh, to? I think, I think ah, it's a uh, Uda Krep, a Kup, Uda Krep. I don't know. That no, one. <laughs> All right. Let me just cue this one up. So uh, I'm going to bring on stage the two performers to tell you. That, well, they don't need to tell you a bit about <laughs> things, do they? But you know what I mean. Yeah. Philip, maybe maybe you guys can talk a little bit about the rehearsal process because I know you've had like zero time to rehearse this. It was put together very quickly. So, um, yeah. yeah, maybe that might be of interest to Tomar. Uh, yeah. So uh, basically, me and Philip uh, had never actually played together before making those recordings. We decided to, uh, yeah, just make a couple of recordings for the WPG. Uh, Philip had played this piece. I think I started a couple of weeks before the recording. So we got together, record like rehearsed for a couple of evenings, and then we did the recording. So it was very, uh, very intense. But uh, I, okay, it so was an amazing after, experience. So after Torel story and now yours. So I'm, I understand that I'm dealing with a bunch of crazy guys uh, <laughs> and unbelievably talented. It's like what? Amazing. Okay. So, so this, what you're saying okay. is it, it took you two weeks to prepare this? Uh, unfortunately, yes. I mean, I don't recommend it. It's uh, <laughs> it's not, not a good idea. It was the same with Alborada, actually. <laughs> and All right. We're going to move on. Here we go. <laughs> this is uh, the performance of Edith Krepp, Aki Brad.
गए ओके सो अगेन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंड इट्स नॉट आउट ऑफ पोलाइटनेस अमेजिंग जॉब रियली आई कैन आई कैन से समथिंग व्हिच इज आई आई विल से आई जस्ट से इट आई हर्ड दिस पीस with so many performances throughout the years with different master classes all over the world and it's really one of the best uh, i've heard so bravo really bravo amazing thank you okay so um uh, do you know what's a uda krep akubrad yeah it's uh per kadu darvuka backwards right yeah. <laughs> how do you know that i well <laughs> I just kind of uh, when we first played it uh, when I first played it so I played it a couple of years ago before this and Tanel just had two weeks but uh, uh, when we first played it I think it's written somewhere on the score or somewhere I uh, I bought the concerto version so and mm. I think it's written in there um, okay so that's how I know yeah okay yeah because I can tell you a story but don't tell anyone because just okay of us are listening now. So at the beginning, when it's, we just uh, performed it uh, also in Israel, but especially uh, outside in our tours uh, in, uh, with uh, Adi Morag, my partner in Perkadu. So um, no one knew what does it mean, Uda Krep Akubrad. And it sounds something like a bit Arabic, a bit Hebrew. So every concert, we had this game, but every concert, we are telling a new story about the, the, the name. Just <laughs> end on stage. and said yeah uda krep akubrad that's the apocalypse of the israeli and palestine that is finally we live together peacefully and were, oh nice so nice really great great and we just invented day after day a new story because it sounds arabic uda krep akubrad okay yeah so now i can't tell the, the story anymore so uh, or different stories So that's just okay. a, a nice uh, anecdote about uh, this piece. Uh, obviously, Avner Dorman, brilliant composer. Uh, we just had him here in Tremolo a few, few days ago. He, he wrote a, a new opera in, uh, for the Israeli opera. So he visited Israel. He lives in, uh, in the States. And um, I, can, you know, I can tell you that we are working on a very big project, Tremolo. Uh, and uh, of Ner Doman, which be launched in two in 2024. Nice. So, okay. Great. So Looking forward. Cool. Cool. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be continue. So okay, guys, let's work. Yeah. Great. Uh, Tim, can we have the first um, page? Uh, to all of you uh, who didn't play the the, the piece. I decided I just photo the photo some of the few pages uh, from the score so when we the three of us are talking to another one to another so you can understand more uh, more in specific what does it mean mm-hmm. okay so sorry for the quality of the of these photos but it will do for now um, okay. Uh, that's the biggest we can uh, get team team yeah I think it is sorry that's no, no, no. that's about for that score I think that's as big as I can get it okay that's more than fine okay so first of all uh, again let me uh, start with telling you a story as you can uh, understand I love stories Uh, but it, it's all true stories so uh, years ago uh, um, I was uh, playing a, a concert in uh, in um, Salvador Bahia in uh, Brazil in a very big uh, festival it was called the uh, Mercado Cultural and uh, after the concert uh, I was in the uh, old city of Salvador and uh, suddenly I Uh, a person a young guy approaches and say hey I was at your concert the other night right we're starting to talk uh, over a coca-cola or a coffee I don't remember and then uh, he tells uh, he, he shared with me that he's a percussionist he's a percussion student 
in, from uh, originally from Portugal, and he came to Brazil to, to study all the uh, heritage of the Brazilian music. And one thing uh, after the other, all of a sudden he tells me, you know what? I have an idea. C come with me. And he just starts walking in the streets of the old city of, um, of uh, Salvador, Bahia. And I'm walking. And then after a few minutes, we are approaching a big metal door. And he's like banging on this uh, door. And after a minute or two, uh, the door opens. And someone who looks like from a fairy tale opens the door, an extremely old man uh, with white robe and uh, very much wrinkled. And they're talking Portuguese between the uh, two of them. And then the student shows me, okay, get in. I just got in. I don't know what, what I was thinking to myself. I mean, they could do anything to me over there, but <laughs> it just felt right at the time. Okay, let's go in there. And then we are approaching a, a room uh, not much bigger than that one with all kinds of bongos and uh, congas and uh, percussion. So I said, okay, I think I'm safe. It's not, they're not going to kill me or rob me or something. And then uh, he explains, this guy, this uh, young student, explains me that this is his teacher and he was in the most important uh, interjections of Brazilian music in the last decades. And while he's sharing it with me, I'm looking at the walls and I see that this guy throughout the years is having pictures with Gilberto Gil and uh, Caetano Veloso, Gal Costa, uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, all the amazing Brazilian uh, uh, musicians. And, uh, and then he offers that he will teach me some conga lesson for free. The best percussionist in the area, maybe in Brazil, that recorded, and I saw a lot of, uh, you know, these gold uh, records on the uh, on pictures, like uh, he won the all kinds of prizes. And I had almost two hours of private lesson with this amazing musician. Why am I telling you that? Because he showed me all kinds of sounds, all kinds of grooves, and I tried to imitate him, and I couldn't. No matter how much I tried, uh, I really did the best I can, but I just played a few seconds, and he stopped me, and he kept on saying, no, listen, listen, no, listen. And he's playing like a god, like everything. So the groove was unbelievable. And I'm saying, oh, my God, how can I play? I will never be able to play something like that. And I keep on trying, and... All the time he's saying, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, no, listen. And I, one failure after the other. At the end, the really last minute, uh, the student, he, he was the interpreter, tells me that his master, his teacher, would like me to teach him something, some groove from my region. So I taught him some Middle Eastern groove, and I'm playing some simple uh, Middle Eastern groove, and then he starts to play it, and I find myself doing something like, no, 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 listen. Like, it was the other way around, and I couldn't believe it that this guy who really played, like, I never heard something similar to that before, all of a sudden collapse in front of my eyes and can play the most simple Middle Eastern groove. And that uh, hit me very strong, this um, um, adventure, this uh, situation. And I understood that each of us, because we are raised in different uh, geographical area, cultural uh, um, observance, if, if I may say, and it really takes a long time to really understand the small, the small details of a groove the small details of a style, of, a, of any kind of music, especially if its, root, if its roots are in the folklore, okay? And that's what I want to tell you about the Uda Kapakubra. I think, first of all, try to listen as much as you can to Middle Eastern music 
and to really try to figure out what are the spices of this specific uh, style, okay? Mm -hmm. Try to, 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 to find out and to teach yourself to be an autodidact, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's start. Uh, the first page, uh, Tim, uh, first of all, you're doing most of it really great, but I think you could do even more, and I mean accents, okay? More accents. At the beginning, like mm -hmm. the accent, I think it it's very Middle Eastern uh, important ingredient. Okay. Then look at the second um, um, the second line, the second system. Okay. Uh, there is this uh, seven. Uh, that's the first time that this sort of motif appears. I think that could be very light way of playing. And then at the end of the same page, the last two bars, there is an, something which is leading us to the same uh, motif, but uh, especially who is, who is percussion to? Okay, so I think you can go when you are doing this uh, uh, downwards passage, make a big crescendo because you know that's again this uh, really um, fascinating and uh, energetic uh, motif. So, like the second time with much more energy, was much more uh, enthusiasm. Okay. okay. So that can be really nice because then also the audience knows, oh, I'm familiar with that. Okay. And it's even more almost like a, a chorus in a song. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then let's go to the, um, the page uh, over there. Great. Thank you so much, Tim, for that. Uh, so in the night eight, in the night nine and sixteen, sorry. Uh, you see that I wrote there like a crescendo. I know it's not written, but mm -hmm. I think that all the second system should have, or even let's look at the, the first system, last bar. Mm -hmm. Then there is a three bar crescendo. Okay, it's a three bar crescendo. Like really make it a big crescendo and then finally and there are not many places like that in this piece there is a water which is a break okay breathe uh, it didn't occur to me until I started to play uh, ensemble uh, chamber music with ensemble, which was not only percussionist, but woodwind and brass mm -hmm. players, that you really, then only then you understand, oh, they really need to breathe. They, they need it. It's not like us that we are playing and yeah, simultaneously we keep on breathing and doesn't give any attention to that. So that's really, Boom, boom, boom. It's okay to breathe, and even it's okay to make this quarter a bit longer. It's it will be really nice, mm -hmm. and it's also mm -hmm. uh, uh, bring us to like the B section. Then yeah. something new is starting. So, okay, uh, yeah. okay, great. Let's go to the next uh, page, uh, Tim. Great. Um, that's in Hebrew what I wrote over there at the top of the page, and uh, and that's uh, that's in Hebrew, but it's an Arabic word, and it means it it pronounced ma'awal, and ma'awal is like a, an ornament in a Arabic uh, music, okay, and that's like the, in, just like trills or different ornament, ornamentation that we know since the Baroque uh, period, but that's the non-Western uh, ornamentation. And that's really pom pom. I can't do it, but there are so many Israeli singers that are doing it. It's like, it's really, they are controlling their uh, throat 
um, in, in a mar marvelous way, so they can really feel that, wow, something like that. So that's an attempt to imitate that ma'awal, okay? So mm -hmm. really think that you are um, playing with it, okay? That it's an ornamentation. Um, Okay, and then let's go to bar 33, which is the second the second system. Okay, it's really I really love it when if you can do two crescendo, two uh, bars crescendo, and then two bars diminuendo. So and then you are like just like uh, running and you are um, giving the stick from one rounder to the to the next one. Mm -hmm. So. Really, and we are as audience we are at the exact point where the stick is moving because one is coming from the from the distance towards us we can see the the, the handing of the mallet and then the other one runner is fading away okay mm -hmm. so we really think of it like a like a big hill of sound and a very long phrase of four bars phrase. It's really nice, really nice. Okay, and then 37, system three. Third system is finally we have something which is really groovy, okay? The low A, it's almost like four on the floor. You know what's four on the floor? Okay, four on the floor is an era in the drum set uh, evolution, uh, oh, which... Yeah started around the 20s, uh, sometime in the 30s, which is, uh, there were a lot of syncopation and stuff like that, but people who danced to the music needed to hear all the time the two, 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 two. And the way I sing it, it sounds more like a techno, not the 20s uh, Charleston, but it started there. Okay, okay. so... So think of it, um, uh, if you can play it like really like really feel the uh, the beat. And if you will feel the beat, obviously I will feel it also as your audience. Okay? Uh, but it's, again, you are playing this part it's so many parts so nicely really um okay let's move on okay now i have a question uh, to all of us um tim uh, the others can also uh, talk or you just can listen and that's it we'll be we will be able to hear them okay hello great Hi. Uh, so look at uh, the first percussionist. Um, first system, the last bar. What do you think that's, that means? What, what, what is that implies? The first percussionist part. But let's decide that not everyone together, like one one at a time, one at a time. Is it bar 55? Bar uh, 56, yes, one bar after. The last bar of the same uh, system. I mean, it, uh, it's like a, a foreshadowing of, of what uh, what is to come kind of in the whole next part. It kind of slowly slowly introduces this like kind of thing okay maybe if, if that's what i will give you a clue you are absolutely okay. right first of all okay. you are absolutely right uh but i i'm thinking about an additional some something uh, additional um mm -hmm. i'll give you a clue what does it try to imitate uh, I mean, a book us maybe yeah. Yeah. a drum maybe? a drum mm -hmm. a drum Okay, it's more like a it's a rhythmic motif, but very light, 
And that's why you are so right that it implies two things. First of all, the next section, but then also the Darbuka will come. Okay, mm -hmm. so think about it very rhythmically, but very light. Okay. Okay. Uh, great. And then at the, uh, a little bit below, uh, if we can uh, scroll it down, Tim, uh, there is the Misterioso, okay, where, you, where we can see the Misterioso word, uh, a bit, no, no, the other way around, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, that's it, great. Okay, so you see, that I'm, I wrote there Misterioso. It's a mm -hmm. Misterioso section. It's really, there is, no one can understand what is the meter. No one understands what's going on. It's like a fog of really interesting uh, colors and notes. It's a great mode. It's, that's actually not an, uh, it's not a Middle Eastern mode. It's a Indian mode from India. Okay, that uh, Avner uh, Dorman used, used, and in order to make this uh, mysterious, even more mysterious, try to think about, let's say, uh, um, these F sharps that are entering once in a while, every time, do something with it. Don't just play it. Don't play tadam tam tadam. Just, just, that's just a rhythm. But something more like tadam pam tadam. Or maybe to do pam something like what? What just happened? Where, where this came from? I don't know. Okay, we we are moving on, and then there is this uh, another F sharp uh, where, if you can see, I wrote echo effect. Mm -hmm. So really, pam pam pam, like really fading away. I don't want to hear when this F sharp stops. It's just, just like the sun is going inside the, the ocean or whatever. It's not really going inside the ocean, but it's, we know it's there. But bum, bum, bum. Mm -hmm. that's it. Disappeared. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, first player, um, the last two bars, uh, if you can do even more uh, the phrase in the A sharp, pam 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 pa ba 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 ba, like really, mm -hmm. here I come, here I come, here I come, here I come, ah, like really, pam 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 pa ba 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 ba, like really, mm -hmm. again, it's all kinds of uh, play with it, like heels of sounds. So sometimes the hill is very um, symbolic. And sometimes, okay, now we have a bigger hill or now it's a longer hill, but pay attention. I'm not using the word mountain. It's only hills of sounds. Yeah. That's sounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, let's move on. That's page the okay now that's my favorite part obviously uh, i started uh, as a kid i started to play the drums i wanted to be a drum set player and i went to a drummer who taught me and then uh, around a year after i started uh, i saw an instrument a new instrument is uh, in his uh, class and i asked him what is that and he said, well, this is a xylophone. And he played. And I said, wow, I want that too. And then I discovered, of course, very slowly, this endless kingdom of percussion. But uh, as I said, I started as a percussionist, as a drummer. And what is that has to do with this section is that because that is a groove. And I think both of you really need to play the same groove together in a unison and to make it uh, maintain throughout the whole section okay very strictly observed exactly the same groove uh, you can decide your own uh, avner writes something 
here. Uh, but what, what I like to do there is a groove that goes like that. I will sing it very slow. Tabu do bam, tabu taga, taga do dam, pam pam pa dim, pabu do bam, pabu tabu, pabu do bam, pam pa ba dum, pam, etc., etc., etc. Now, if you come, if you maintain that uh, groove and you keep it going all the way, then it's like a drummer who is playing the same groove or a bass player, okay, a rhythm section. And then on top of it, all kinds of things happening. The percussionist is sometimes contrib contributing his own uh, improvisation. And then the, the, guitar, uh, the guitar, guitarist, and then maybe a singer, a keyboard player, uh, a saxophone or an ethnic uh, uh, wind uh, instrument. But something is all the time is happening, but it's always on the same layer. Taku to tam, taku taku, taku to tam, pam pa ba do, pa ba do bam, pa ba ta bu, pa ba do bam, pam pa ba do. And it's amazing. Even with my really bad singing, I see at least half of the heads. Like, yeah, yeah, like that. Okay, it affects us. Groove affects us. It makes us want to do something either dance or move our heads. It's, it's a nice feeling. We love to feel a groove which is really solid and musical, obviously. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do we have another page there, Tim? I don't remember. We have. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, that's an important uh, thing I wanted to, to tell you. There is uh, all kinds of uh, um, drums who enters in one place and then after a while another place. It's very, you need to be very, uh, to pay really attention to the balance between the drum and the marimba in two aspects. First of all, as I said, balance. Drum tends to be louder than a marimba. Obviously, we all know that. So we need to make attention, pay attention that it's not louder than that. It's part of the ensemble. Okay? And I think sometimes it was a bit louder for my taste. Okay? Mm -hmm. Second thing I wanted to tell you is, is a, a secret is that a, a drum is also a music instrument. I think you can do amazing music with a drum, okay? Uh, especially uh, in bar, if you have the score, 128, 9, 30, 31. That's like the cadenza of the drums with all the kicks of the quint, uh, of the fifth and fourth uh, on the marimba. The marimbas are playing tung ta and all these the base the floor toms and the darbukas are entering and it's like their show but still try to make a hierarchy in these notes which note is more uh, important which is which can be softer which can be a ghost note even sometimes that we hardly notice that it really exists. There has to be a uh, hierarchy between the different notes. And then it's, first of all, again, much more groovy. And, and of course, we are all musicians. So there is a phrase also in that, uh, um, uh, in that drum part. We need to finish uh, this section, uh, Tim. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, but yeah, amazing comments. And I, I completely like yeah. agree with you. And it's really interesting for me because I've performed this piece quite a lot. And to hear your interpretation is uh, it's not only refreshing, but quite nostalgic because I've, I've been listening to your recordings for so long that I can see where exactly where you're coming from. And I, yeah. I probably could have said what you're going to say. It's really interesting. Um, one thing that I I would have said with these guys, I don't know what you think as well, is is sort of maybe 
trying to explore the um, the areas of the drums that you're playing in as well to get the different subtleties because you know when you're playing with marimba mallets on the, the barabuka it's, it's it's not synonymous with how it should be played so you can actually get like a massive degree of different inter inflections there which yeah. personally yeah. I, I quite like I, I like to sort of do a few rim shots and a few normal notes and which yeah. adds a completely different kaleidoscope to the color as well so I would encourage I totally you guys. Agree. I totally yeah. agree. And, and if I may uh, add some last uh, comment about uh, Avner Dorman and, and uh, us percussionists. I think we have, and I mean all of us here, we have a, a duty, seriously, I, I, I mean it, to the next generation of percussionists. Because these days, the literature of percussion is being written. Okay, it's a new literature. We don't have the uh, like the pianist uh, 300 years of uh, literature uh, compositions. It's it's really happening here. And if you will see the most amazing pieces by composers, okay, by composer, not that by percussionist who writes who compose, but composers who writes for us. The most amazing compositions were the one where the, we had a collaboration between the performer and uh, and the percussionist mm. because we learn from each other and uh, i have a, a, a funny story uh, about uh, working with avner that uh, one in one uh, day in the rehearsal he came and he said i have a great idea i want you to play with your fingers on your on the marimba and honestly speaking it it was a huge fight we told them you are crazy no one will hear it. It will sound like crap. It will be the it, you wrote so good. What why what is this shit? It's not no, no, don't do that. Please don't do that. And we really had a, a really argument about that. Mm -hmm. And he was right. He yeah. was right. One of the best places. It's like after this cadenza drum, it's like all the audiences, especially when I remember when we were playing it uh, in big halls. You all of a sudden hear that no one dares to breathe it's like taking you <gasps> like that no one dares to breathe or to or to move yeah so, uh, totally. so it, it teaches us that you know we can st we can learn so much we can have so many great ideas from a music from a composer but it goes both ways they are studying mm -hmm. so much good things from us i mean it's a whole uh, other lecture, but look at the 80s, what the 80s did for, for instance, for the multi-percussion scene. Xenakis Ribbons, I Ching, Kevin Volant's uh, um, uh, Shoe Slips with a Small Blanket, Marimba Spiritual. I mean, so many amazing masterpieces were written in the 80s. And why is that? Because the composers worked with percussionists. Mm, totally. So that's so I think if you are having around you in your academies, in your any doesn't matter where, a composer who you like, hold him, tell him, mm -hmm. okay, let's write something together. Let's go on this journey. Because all the best pieces that I played were pieces that were written for me. Because they mm -hmm. it was a, a mutual uh, win. It was a win-win situation. Yeah, totally. I, I thought that mm -hmm. was deliberate, actually. You know, like you've got the, the word spelled backwards, kind of pal palindrome, but not because it doesn't spell both ways. But I thought it was a reverse for the instruments as well. So the darabuka normally would be played with the hands, but then it flips to the marimba with the hands. So it's sort of like a reverse thing as well. So No, no. I can tell you by, about by your chance. comment that you are much more sophisticated than we are. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe we, we use that a few times. Maybe it's a lie, but it sounds good, so. <laughs> but that's a okay, great story. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. One, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we need to move great. on. Some fantastic comments there. So um, yeah, let's just uh, minimize everyone for a minute. Thanks, Dalar. Thank you, it was amazing. And if anyone is interested to hear the best version of that, do get the first album from Perkabukas. 
it is very very good you can find it in any CD shop around your houses yeah no but it is very good but you won't find a better version honestly so I think am I mistaken we're gonna go to uh, two themes right now yes with Isaac so we're gonna go back to London Isaac do you want to explain a little bit about this first whilst yes, I keep please do it? that's that was obviously a, a great surprise because you know Avishai Cohen is one of the Israeli uh, amazing jazz players also of course international jazz player and I think one of his uh, one of the things that I really like about him is if I can say there are three types of musicians in the world okay three types <laughs> first one is someone for instance let's let's talk about us percussionists okay there is one percussionist who is who can do a lot of things you can play the, the drum set the marimba multi-percussion marching band orchestra player you name it i'm there okay this is one type of percussionist second one is someone who really taking one instrument or one style and making himself a master in it like uh, giovanni il daggio on, uh, on uh, congas all the amazing drum set players we know um uh, there is a do you know zohar fresco no I... he's a hand drummer player amazing so he he's playing only frame drum now only frame drum not even darbuka he used to play darbuka also in ring only frame drum so that's the second type and the third type is, is percussionist or musician that really uh, succeeded he succeeded to um, to create his own language and sound okay uh, for instance a bigger now that we know miles davis okay if someone would uh, put a record of miles davis now which i am not familiar with i will immediately know that it's miles davis okay uh, same goes to pat metini etc etc so i think abishai cohen is one of these guys that he has a, his own sound of jazz ensemble and jazz uh, composition so that's really really great so why did you choose, how did you choose it what what was the process um, so as a drummer i'd been um i'd been a massive fan of um mark juliana for quite some time and by connection pretty much everything that he'd done with avishai um and i saw that trio with him avishai and shy maestro um at the quite a few years ago now at the barbican i think it was four years ago five years ago something like that um um and yeah ever since then it had kind of been me at home on my drums um just learning some of the tunes uh figuring out the rhythmic ideas that avish i had used to compose them or things like that um and i wanted i wanted to be able to because i'd spent so much time on that i wanted to be able to bring that into a kind of percussion concert hall showcase scenario where i could show it to my peers and actually i wrote and performed this for um this percussion competition that was happening here at the royal college so that was after we'd finished our exams in the summer it, uh, a month and a bit later there was the um, yeah, end of june wasn't it? yeah yeah about a month later there was the um uh, percussion competition so i thought hey i don't really know what else to do might as well do something of my own so i kind of yeah um, whipped this up but i knew i knew i needed i knew that just marimba wouldn't cut it from the start i knew it needed something else than just marimba okay so that's uh, you're referring to the drums which are joining towards the end yeah sure towards the end right. yeah right uh, so uh, first of all i can tell you that uh, as from uh, next week i have a student who is going to play it if you will allow it right. yes um yeah sure yeah. no yeah, of course, absolutely yeah amazing so uh, <laughs> 
So thank you for that already. Uh, okay, so um, let's let's see some of it, uh, Tim. Okay, Tim, uh, can you uh, take it to the last uh, one minute? Again, first of all, all of you, thank you so much for these videos. Really, really, it's not out of politeness. Uh, you value can tell you they know me. It's not good. I'm tell I'm saying. I'm really honest. So uh, thank you. It was really. It felt any every time I look at one of your videos, the four videos that the team sent me. The next thing I wanted to go to do is to go and practice. So it means it tells you a lot about this uh, performance. And so really, really great. Uh, what is Chutzpan? Well, I I heard um, this clip of Avishai talk about it, and I think he meant Chutzpan as in courage, like balls, you know, to be rudely. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but um, but he called it Chutzpan because it was like Shai had a lot of Chutzpan, um, so it was kind of a piece for him. And he was somebody with chutzpah, so that's... So it's partly true. Chutzpah, chutzpah is not only courage. It's a, it's a someone who dares to say things which is not always uh, politically correct or right. to say it at the same time, at the right time, at the, same, at the right place, and stuff like that. Uh, that's why we use it. Usually the word chutzpah or chutzpan is the guy who is using chutzpah okay he's a character 
So usually we are using, we are in Israel, we are using this word chutzpan to a kid who didn't uh, study manners properly and stuff like that. So yeah, he's chutzpan. Why, why, why? What does he think to himself? He's chutzpan, you know, like that. So uh, it says something about the peace, which is uh, should be in one way a bit childish, yeah. but on the, at the same time, very, um, uh, wait, we don't need it yet. Uh, thank you. Um, but at the same time, with, uh, as you said, with both. Okay, it is what it is. Okay, so first of all, great uh, arrangement. Um, I would like to start with, uh, do you have the score in front of you? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... If, first of all, I love the way you are really flying over the keyboard in the first uh, three systems. Really, especially the really nice and effortless. It really makes you feel like I'm enjoying the music. Not okay. What is he playing? Wow! It's a, no. I want when I'm listening to a Vishay Khan composition, I want to enjoy. It. And uh, it's one of his. Uh, uh, footprints, in a way, in, a, in a, uh, or finger tree uh, prints uh, in his positions. So, but let's go on with uh, bar number fourteen. Okay, bar number fourteen. Don't be shy. Can you please sing it? Is that the? Sorry, I don't. I have, can't because I'm on Toll's computer. I didn't manage to get the score. I thought I'd yeah, be online, on, but on the tablet. Ah. Uh, Yes, I can. Sorry, I can just. Well, did, which bit is that? How does it go? Because I know, I know. The, where the groove in the left hand starts. Yeah. So um um. Okay. So, 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 record yourself play the same things okay and i think sometimes you will be amazed the difference between what we have in mind and what we are actually delivering to the audience what's going out okay so i think it would be really nice uh, exercise for you to, to sing it to understand okay what is the groove that i'm hearing in my in my head and what is the rule that I'm using my voice to, to pronounce, to, to put it out, okay? And at the same time, listen, is it really happening on the marimba? Okay? Because honestly saying, when you sang it now, I, I like it much better than the groovy on the marimba. It was really groovy the way you sang it, really nice, really nice. I think it could be even groovier also on the marimba, just like you sang it. Yeah. Okay? So that, that can be really nice. Um, and, uh, and the next thing I wanted to discuss with you is uh, bar 22. 22. Yeah. I've got the score up. Now. You get it? Yeah. You have it? Yeah. Amazing. So I think you should show us that from there, uh, the right hand is actually doing a melody, okay? Mm. And even though, uh, even though we are playing on the marimba and we cannot really control the sustain of each note, because it is what it is. It's, it's a word that we are striking, but we do have our body to show, okay? For instance, let's make another second. Okay. Okay, Isaac. Yeah. Let's make an experiment. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. I'm. Uh, well, it's really uncomfortable, but I'll, I'll make it happen. Okay. Uh, I will play several things, and by watching it and listening, of it, obviously, to it, try to try to um, to sing it. Just to sing. Okay. It. Okay. Sure. So, um, number one, I think, okay, number one, I will 
Tuck, 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 tuck. Amazing. Even there is no delay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so, let's uh, example number two. Okay. Example number two. Ta pa 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 pa. Great. Did it really happen? No. No. Obviously not. But it doesn't matter. Everyone. It doesn't matter if you are in London, in uh, Israel, Hong Kong, Berlin, San Francisco. Everyone that I will play like that, he will hear, even if it's if he's not musician. Uh, bah, 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 bah. He will understand that. So I think you can use it also on the marimba, because there are, if I'm not mistaken, there is, there are also some uh, dead strokes you're using. Um, I'm trying to think if but, uh, sometimes on the I think in the seconds you're playing the third and some of the seconds are sounds uh, yeah it's more condensed. yeah kind of yeah yeah I think so um, <laughs> okay so I'm not I sure how on purpose that was but um, yeah I I think I know what you mean um, okay so I think you can really uh, use this uh, uh, this art. Yeah. I mean, what are we? Our art, the percussionist, is not the way we are hitting the drum. Right. It's more yeah. we are going out out of it. And it doesn't matter whether it's a timpani, a cymbal, crash, xylophone, marimba, drum set, whatever. Because you know, I'm playing percussion for about 35 years. If I will go outside the street and bring someone and hit a drum, and then he will hit a drum, it's very sad what I'm going to say, but it will not sound that different. Mm. Okay? But how am I uh, uh, using this kind of trampoline out of the drum? And that's the art we are using. Okay? To show the music, how we are playing music out of the drum and not into the drum. Or in our case, the marimba. Okay, so think again. This uh, groove, nice groove you are having on the left hand, and then the, the right hand should be a different player, more like. The really long notes, and then short one when you decide. And you can show it to us, and then we will, our mind, our flexible mind, will understand what you are singing to us on the marimba. Okay? Sure. You think yeah, you can make it right? Yeah. No, thanks. I will. I think it, will be, it can be really, really interesting. So in any uh, part of this um, composition, yeah. look for the right groove and sing it, and for the right phrase and also sing it, but really also think about the movement of our body to show the music for the audience. Because marimba is, I think, it's one of the, of the music instruments that it's much more enjoyable to see us play uh comparing to only an audio recording there is something sure. very uh, very hypnotic in seeing a percussion a marimbist player playing on the marimba okay now uh, i'm uh, jumping a bit sorry for that uh, for the last section where when i wanted to um, that we will listen together to the drums which are joining mm. so Obviously, we wanted to, to, to put the drum there because the groove is very nice. Where uh, that's what Juliana plays in this uh, track. Yes, yeah. Yes. So what marks Juliana is playing? Obviously, it's great. So you wanted to imitate that. Yeah, but, the end I did. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. but I think first of all, uh, at the section. Uh, where the uh, called Pinsin Pinsin, okay? Yeah. That's when 
can you can you look at the where the bass drum when the kick drum uh, enters? Yeah. You have it. Yeah. I think it would be much more nicer if you could play it octaves, not sure. single note. Not single note. It would be more sound. The sound would be broader, more uh, present. Sure. It would be more present. And yeah. then I think when we are putting a drum set or parts out of the drum set with marimba, we should be really careful. I think that the sound should be much more, again, condensed, uh, maybe a small drum, maybe not a snare drum, or maybe a, a piccolo drum, or a piccolo snare drum, or you know, try to find your own sound. And, uh, and right. maybe, yeah. maybe instead of a drum, or a snare of, instead of a snare drum, just popped into my mind, use a very dry uh, metal pressure. So it will it will have the, shh, but it's much more. It doesn't have the resonance, mm. the body of the snare drum, but it still has this crispy sound of the snare drum. It applies to that. So I can really hear like something with. Really small, but very effective, and not not too big for the delicate uh, mariba. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, no, thanks. Um, but, but again, there are so many uh, nice places. The triplets we are playing, the everything. There, it's so nice. And as I said at the beginning, as from next week, I'm working on that with uh, one of my private, my own <laughs> students. Thanks uh, a lot. Let's talk about. Let's talk about uh, um, uh, arrangement. In general speaking, okay. Do we have some more time, guys, or you want to finish? It's um, I have time. Yeah. Um, okay. I have plenty of time. Great. So let's talk about reasons to write an arrangement. Okay. And Tim, you can put everyone uh, back yeah. uh, if they are still there. Uh, so reasons to write an arrangement. Okay. Original composition not a problem okay i have an idea i'm writing it's my own no one can tell me anything that's me an arrangement is much more riskier it's much more riskier because there is the original and usually people know the original version they know it and once they know it they will compare it always okay so there are uh, i discovered that there are two reasons or two main reasons to make a proper and good arrangement. First one, to actually make a better version than the original composition. Do you have some uh, example? Um, well, a lot of famous pieces which were originally written for piano duet, like um, yes. Rite of Spring or Ravel pieces like Laval's and so exactly. on. Exactly. Exactly. The orchestration, the orchestration yeah. uh, takes us, the uh, audience, to another dimension of imagination. Mm. It's really fantastic to hear, especially a master of orchestration like Ravel, uh, as you said, just like he did with a picture at an exhibition. Yeah. Amazing piece. And he took not his own piece, but someone else and orchestrated it. And it's like one of the wow. best. Uh, and most playable uh, and most played uh, pieces in the world until now. It's really uh, orchestra uh, setting, of course. So, so this is one uh, example. Uh, the other example is presenting the piece in a different light, okay, a different aspect. Uh, not too long ago, I've heard Billy Jean by Michael Jackson, okay with a string quartet and a singer. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow, I was amazed. I, it's, uh, look for it in the, actually on YouTube. Just write Billie Jean, singer, string quartet. You have it. What they're doing with it, it's just like, it's completely a different sound, a different song. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
So that's an example for presenting the piece in a different light, okay? Um, uh, can you uh, move on? Uh... Ah, wait. Can we... Can we... So sorry, we can't uh, hear anything now, right? Oh, that's we had the, just we had a small drama. Uh, yeah, no, you won't won't be able to hear that one. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no it's okay. We, I will just share with you. A uh, few minutes just before you entered, uh, Tim and I discovered that uh, the presentation I prepared on a PowerPoint cannot be on. Uh, this amazing app that the uh, uh, team uh, is using. So we tried to, we need to, we needed to improvise. We are musicians, so we needed to improvise. So uh, I want to, um, uh, to show you um, some arrangements that uh, I was involved with, with, uh, with percussion, obviously, with percussion. So again, you can write down and then on your own time, uh, I wish you could go and uh, listen to it because it's uh, interesting. So write down the Etude number 5, Toccata Grotesca, by a composer which is called Marc André Hemelin. Okay? Marc André Hemelin, if someone knows, he's a virtuous uh, pianist, amazing pianist, and he writes also for piano. And uh, years ago, in uh, it was exactly, I can tell you, in 2013, I was uh, on my way back to from a concert late at night. I listened to a classical uh, radio station, and they did uh, homage to Mark Andre Hemelin. And among other pieces, they put this Etude Number no. Five, Toccata Grotesca. And honestly speaking, I drove and I all the time listened to it, and I said, "Wow, that's an amazing piece!" But oh my God, the composer did a huge mistake a huge mistake it was supposed to read to be written for a percussion ensemble not for piano it's it's a mistake what's going on and uh, and immediately i came back i found the music i found the the score and uh, an amazing talented young composer in israel which is called dor fisher uh, did an arrangement for a percussion octet okay 10 uh, percussionists uh, and we performed it and it was unbelievable so both um, versions are on YouTube the original Mark andre Hamlin etude number no. five Toccata grotesca and the percussion version of the same piece you can write it and you will find it um, what else what else is downstairs there can you scroll down? Okay. Uh, ah, okay. That's another project uh, I was involved with, and I thought to finish with that because it's really nice. The Planets, Gustav Holst, uh, written in uh, 18, 1918. And in 1918, uh, we decided, uh, myself and the Professor Tomer Lev, uh, he's a pianist and was the head of the Buchmann Meta School of Music, which is the Academy of Music in Tel Aviv University, where I'm teaching. And we decided to make a, a, a project. We took the planets and we took seven uh, Israeli composers and each one arranged or yeah, rearranged the planets by Gustav Holst for an, this, the next ensemble. Four pianists and four percussionists. Okay? And, and that led to really different light and different perspective of the piece so obviously we cannot compete with the huge massive orchestration of gustav holst but it was really something else it wasn't better than the original one no but it was really different and people really loved it and again you can take a look at it uh, under i think it's under tremolo ensemble or tremolo ensemble planets something that you find out and you can make your own decision. I really, uh, I loved, I loved it, uh, this uh, adventure, this musical adventure. Okay, if you have any kind of questions, 
for this uh, for for now if you want to contact me later on feel free uh, team by all means you can send them my email or my you know now it's easy Facebook, whatever you want all right well i'll just wrap the stream up so thank you toma so much for your time tonight some amazing insight into not only some of the music that you performed but some other ones as well so um from the whole wpd clan here um thank you so much for your time we've really enjoyed that and we will see you tomorrow for another edition until then sleep tight <laughs>